The ionosphere is the ionized part of the Earth's upper atmosphere that extends from about 80 to 600 kilometers above sea level. It's a region within the thermosphere filled with charged particles that play a crucial role in radio communication by reflecting radio waves back to Earth. It also contributes to the occurrence of auroras and is ionized by solar radiation. The ionosphere has historically been divided into regions D, E and F, with the term layer referring to the ionization within a region. The lowest is the D region, between 50 and 90 kilometers in altitude. Next is the E region, between 90 and 150 kilometers. And the F region is the ionosphere above the E region. During the day, the F layer splits into two layers and then recombines again at night. Since the ionosphere's existence is due to radiation from the sun striking the atmosphere, all three layers are more dense during the day. At night, they decrease in density, with the D layer essentially disappearing. Historically, we know today that the E layer was discovered first. In 1901, Marconi transmitted a signal between Europe and North America and showed that it had to bounce off an electrically conducted layer at about 100 kilometers altitude. It became apparent that radio waves followed the Earth's curvature. Physicists assumed that radio waves were being reflected from a layer in the atmosphere where the sun's ultraviolet light had liberated electrons from their atoms. A quarter of a century later, in 1927, Sir Edward Appleton, a British physicist, named the conducting layer the E-layer, which was an abbreviation for electrical layer. 20 years later, in 1947, Appleton was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for his investigation of the physics of the upper atmosphere, especially for the discovery of the so-called Appleton layer which we know today as the F layer. The D layer is the lowest region of the ionosphere, situated approximately 60 to 90 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Unlike the higher layers of the ionosphere, the D layer contains a lower density of free electrons, as ionization primarily occurs due to the absorption of solar X-rays and Lyman alpha radiation. This layer is most prominent during the daytime, diminishing significantly at night when ionizing radiation from the sun is absent. The D-layer can absorb high-frequency radio waves, leading to signal attenuation and degradation of radio communication, particularly for frequencies below 10 MHz. Its presence and behaviour are also influenced by solar activity, such as solar flares, which can temporarily increase ionisation levels and affect communication signals. One important layer from the standpoint of navigation and communications is the F2 layer, where electron concentrations reach their highest values. At high latitudes, there is another source of ionisation called the aurora. The aurora is a display of lights caused by electrons and protons striking the atmosphere at high speed. The particles come from the magnetosphere and spiral down the magnetic field lines of the Earth. These particles also produce a spectral array of light, and when they strike the atmosphere, they also produce ionization. Exactly. 
Bouncing signals off the ionosphere is what allows radio signals to reach places all over the world. Overall, the ionosphere's layers interact with radio waves based on their frequencies and time of day, with higher layers generally supporting long-distance HF communications, and lower layers absorbing or reflecting low-frequency waves.